I've come back to Tripoli to see how some of the most vulnerable people I've photographed over the years are coping. First met Iron a couple of years ago. And Aya was born with spina bifida, so she's never been able to walk. She's needed medical care her whole life. In that situation then was, was, was desperate. Um, they were very worried about whether I would survive. When I first met them, they were living in a tent on waste ground. They'd left Syria in search of medical care for Aya. I've heard that they'd moved into a half-built house on the outskirts of Tripoli. Hello, Anna. Hey. Hi, how are you? Hey. Have a kiss? <laughs> Good to see you. She's grown so much. I brought them the photo that I took in 2014. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it raised some funds to help them, but their living conditions had hardly improved, and Aya's health remained fragile. She lives with an open wound on her spine that is at constant risk of infection. Aya's healthcare costs are crippling. Her parents, Ayman and Shehan, like the vast majority of Syrian refugees in Lebanon, are not allowed to work. So the family tries to survive on the small amount of money they receive from the UN's refugee agency. After two years of exile, hope is running out. But with no work and no money, they're trapped in Lebanon. They were identified for possible resettlement in France, but they are still waiting for medical clearance. No date's been set. Since the war started, fewer than 12 and a half thousand Syrian refugees have been resettled from Lebanon. Whilst they wait for the call, Aya's health is getting worse. <laughs> I mean, last time I felt desperate just leaving them, it just, it just, was frightened that maybe they wouldn't even survive the winter. But you know, now they're stuck in this, this limbo that, yes, they have shelter, uh, they have just enough food to get by on, but Eamon can't work. So they have no future, and without future, they have no hope. <laughs> 